Hi there, welcome to my short video on how to use Miro. Miro is a brilliant virtual whiteboard tool. I use it a lot in my virtual facilitation and in collaboration sessions and workshops. It's fantastic because everybody can all work together remotely wherever they are and share ideas and get that creativity going and get that collaboration going too. So let's make a start. The first thing we need to do is to log into Miro.com. Now I already have a Miro account, so I go straight into my dashboard. There are free options for Miro. You don't have to pay for this. I choose to because I use it so much. A key thing is to make sure you go in through Google Chrome because Miro doesn't work as well when you're using Firefox or Internet Explorer, those sorts of browsers. So go in through Chrome and also advise any delegates who are going to be collaborating on the board to use Chrome as well. You can see I've got lots of stuff going on here. These are all my different projects and so on. I want to start off by showing you how to create a Miro board. But before you start your board, make sure you map out what you want to do in the day, what the purpose of the session is and the different activities that you've got in mind. So plan things first, think it through and then go to Miro and build Miro to support your objectives and to support your plan. Let's go to a new board. You can just click on this blue square here and this will load. And this is a blank Miro board. What will pop up will be the invitation to choose a template. I'm just going to click on the X for now to close that so that I can show you what a completely fresh blank Miro board looks like. This is it. It sort of goes on for infinity, I think. It just goes on and on and on. So lots and lots of space. You're unlimited really in what you can do. And that is brilliant. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give my Miro board a name. I'm going to go over to here on the top left where it says Untitled. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to call it Sample Strategy Board because I want to set up a couple of strategy activities for my delegates and I'm going to show you how to do that. So Sample Strategy Board, just type in the name, click off it and you can see that the name of the board has now been changed. If I ever want to go back to all my other boards, I just click on my row and I go to all of them and you can see that the sample strategy board is now in my whole library of boards. I do organize them into projects as well. The first thing I'm going to do is think about what I want to do initially to kick off. And for strategy, I want people to think about what's going on in the outside world, especially with all the change right now. So I'm going to have a look in the templates to see what there is. Now, when you click on templates, this was the one that popped up when we first went into the board. You can see that there are example templates for all sorts of things, meetings and workshops, ideation, brainstorming, research, design, agile, strategy planning, mapping, diagramming, and so on. You can also have a look as well, which I love, the Myroverse. The Myroverse is brilliant because that's a community area where people who are using Miro and creating some really fabulous boards upload their work so that the rest of us can benefit from them. And here are, I just flip through, you can see how creative these all are. I love the monster workshop. That's a great way of getting people practicing, getting a, the ice broken. Le Miro Cafe is cool as well. And there are some really sort of strategic things, very practical things as well uh, that you can use loads and loads and loads of stuff there you see the value proposition canvas workshop if you're into doing stuff like that as well so lots and lots of customer journey maps many many um, examples but i want to do a pest analysis to start off with to look at the outside environment pest stands for political economic social and technological change I'm sure you've heard of that before. Some people call it step, some people call it steeple. I found the template, I put it into search. Here it is, and you can see that it's appeared on my board. Now, what I like to do is to put all of my activities, each one into its own frame in Miro. The reason I do that is because it holds it all together. And when I come to save everything and print it out, it means that everything is bound quite nicely. So I pick from the left hand toolbar, the 16 to nine ratio here, and I put the work 
inside the frame. And I choose 16 to 9 because that's a PowerPoint slide so that when all the frames are printed off as a PDF, they're a really good size to be used. How you actually print things off afterwards, you go to this top left hand area here, the arrow in the tray that says export this board and you can see lots and lots of different options there to export. Okay, so I'm going to call this new frame the pest analysis and you can see I just clicked on where it said new frame and typed over it. Um, I also want to make this bigger I think so you know, if I want to make these areas bigger and play around with it you can adapt all of this to meet your needs. You, know, you can also grab the whole thing I'm just really showing you the flexibility of how you can move things around. I think that font needs to be bigger so I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger there. Again, I'm playing to show you that you can, you know, just change things around. So I'm going to make that one bigger to match. And um, actually, I don't want all these sticky notes on there, so I'm going to get rid of them. So as you can see, you can take templates, you can create them actually from scratch yourself. I'll show you how to do that in a second, or you can edit something that is existing. But actually looking at that, I think that's looking pretty good nice and clean, ready for delegates to use. So I need to lock it. I'm gonna lock it in place so that when delegates work on it, they're not moving it around. But you know, it's hard starting with a blank page. So what I'm going to do is add a sticky note by clicking on the square image with the upturned corner. And I'm gonna pick a pink sticky note. I'm gonna to choose to put it there, put type something here so that delegates can see that they can add their stickies when they get to the board. And I'm gonna change that to handwriting, okay? So let's just move that around. So you can see I'm moving this around and because I've locked the frame, I've, I've locked this area of the board, nothing else is moving. It's only the sticky note, which is great. And actually, if I wanted the sticky note to stay in that same place, I could just lock that too. And if you want to unlock anything, you just click on it, long press, and then it can be moved again. So type something here. So that's how you create a frame and a board. And that's the first activity. The next activity, I think I'm going to do a SWOT analysis. So over to templates, I'm going to type in SWOT to see if it comes up. Oh, there's a SWOT analysis template. I'll add it. There we go. Fantastic. I'm going to put a frame around it. There we go. Let's enlarge that. So the side by side, there a bit more space, but it's still a 16 by 9 ratio. So when it's saved as a PDF, it'll still come out consistently. I'm going to give it a name, SWOT analysis. I'm going to remove these stickies. I think it's all looking very blue and I'm a pink fan. So let's change the color of those. I'm just really showing you that you can change the color. And then let's lock that board by clicking on SWOT analysis there. Lock the board, okay? Now, if I wanted to move these round, if I wanted to change my mind and do SWOT before PEST, which really I wouldn't do, we'll unlock that. And then we grab the title. You see my cursor is on the title of the board. And by grabbing the title, I'm able to move the whole board. If I don't just grab the title and just grab a piece of the board, that's not what I want to happen. I want to keep all those bits as they are. So there, I was just showing you that I wanted the board to move. I actually really do want it back where it was in the first place. So I'm gonna move it back over here. And you see, as I, as I move along, the board will actually move. There we go. And Miro will pick up whether you're using a mouse, a trackpad, or whatever, if it doesn't pick it up, it normally does it automatically, then um, you can actually change it in the settings. There we go. Now, as you're adding things to the board, I might have 15 things like this, or it might be across, down, around, in the order that I want people to go. So it's important to know about this navigation tool in the bottom right hand side here, this area. And what you can do is if I want to really zoom in or out so let's make this a lot smaller press the minus here uh, you can make it bigger if i want to move around i can grab this whole square 
you see okay now some other things i want to show you how to do i've shown you how to do a sticky note you can add in shapes so if you want to build your own board from scratch you can use um, circles again you can change all the colors uh, and you can put text in these as well and you can change the color of the text you can see you can do anything just in the toolbar it's very very intuitive i love these connecting lines so let's say i wanted to move this shape here and i wanted to connect that shape there and let's connect the two click on connection line let's have the arrow and i want to connect the the shape with the text box there yeah and it'll connect if i want to move this about anywhere then the connecting line still stays in place you can draw through using the pen you can add comments the frames bit we've looked at you can upload things from your device through a url look in your files through chrome as well and what i'm going to do actually is go to three, these three dots and i'm going to do a google image search so i want a picture of the coronavirus to go in the middle of my pest analysis so i type in coronavirus some images come up i quite like the look of that one because it's on a white background so click you can see upload straight into the myro board there we go and I'm, i want it somewhere towards the middle because i think it affects everything and make it small now it's really important actually that you and your delegates get very familiar with zooming in and out uh, because sometimes the temptation is that they could be working at sort of this level and trying to make all of this bigger where in fact if they just you know zoom like that they can work quite comfortably and adjust things uh, as they want it now let's say my board is ready and i want to make it so that my delegates can come and join me and they can play on the board all i do is i press share i'll change my settings so that anyone with the link can edit it says beta there but it works really well so i click on edit and it will give me the opportunity to copy a board link i click on that and then if i'm working in zoom or teams i stick that in the chat people use the link and they come and join me on the board and what i do first of all is give them a tour around pretty much as I have done with you. Now there are loads of features in Miro and it would take for a number of different videos to show you. Some of my favorite are the timer. So you can set a timer here at the bottom, the clock at the bottom. Uh, you can see how your frames are laid out when you've got a lot. Um, that's really helpful. You can add in cards to the board as well and you know, add people, tag people in so a number of things you can stick this into presentation mode so that you're looking at it as if you would on a presentation the best thing to do really is to play around with it and make sure that your delegates are getting comfortable with miro i'll often create activities before an event so that it gives them a chance to practice and here's welcome to miro this is something that I've asked people to do and have a go at. You can see that there's somebody on this right now, actually, that's more luck than, than judgment. And Harry's thinking about his superpower. So I'll get them to do something like, what is your superpower? You know, play around, get, grab a post-it note so that people are feeling comfortable. And I send them some instructions as well on how to use Miro and how to have a play. And I will give those to you you can access them down here so you can see what i'm sending out i hope that's given you a quick guide to how i use myro set up a board and share it if you've got any other comments or if there's anything else you want to know about myro then do drop me a line it's joe at bigbangpartnership.co.uk comment down here and if you want more information on myro and other virtual facilitation tips and techniques then please like this video and make sure you subscribe to the channel. See you soon. Thank you for tuning in to the Idea Time Show, brought to you by Dr. Jo North. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and access more completely free resources at bigbangpartnership.co.uk forward slash resources. We'll see you next time.